contact centers they had to adapt quickly due to the many changes that we have seen last year. But what has been the role of cloud in this transformation? And what is the impact on the business? Matt Matsui is the chief product officer at Calabrio. He's here to talk us through the recent launch report. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Yes, in your report, you have surveyed contact center managers from both cloud-based and other hand um, on-premise type of organizations. And 75% agree that cloud-based solutions support organizations to be more strategic on one hand and more customer oriented. Can you elaborate on this? I'd be glad to. I, you know, I, I think it's it really speaks to the pace of change in today's business world. Um, the world around us and our businesses are changing so rapidly. I think from a technology perspective, agility is, is really the key attribute that we're looking for. And the cloud truly provides that. Um, as an example, when the pandemic first hit, um, we, we sent uh, for our customers, we helped send over 100,000 agents home in the first 10 days. Um, and that is so much easier to do in the cloud. You know, what, what, one thing that's, that's, uh, that's a clear differentiator um, is that there's really no corporate bandwidth constraint uh, when we're dealing with cloud solutions, right? Because in, in a corporate environment, you have to look at VPN and everything's being kind of funneled through uh, corporate, the corporate network. But because cloud is naturally distributed, um, you can actually distribute as much as you want. Um, and that's exactly what happened for us. We're able to send so many agents home immediately without having to think about bandwidth. Um, another example would be our, re our ability to reconfigure and repackage our solutions in the cloud. Um, be because it's so easy for us to roll out changes in the cloud, we're able to repackage solutions specifically designed for work at home agents. Um, and that was something we did, I believe, in the first three days. We came out with six new packages specifically designed to help agents be more productive at home when they're not sitting inside a contact center site. Um, and then, you know, finally, we've got the ability to flex licenses. And again, when you think about being strategic to the business, a lot of it's about flexing the way the business needs to flex. Seasonal, whether it's seasonality, um, different growth patterns, acquisitions, things that happen in businesses today. Um, the contact center is able to add 10,000 licenses overnight. Um, or conversely, we can take away 5,000 licenses literally in an hour. Um, and the ability to have that kind of control over licensing and the ability to roll out those kind of things to agents and customers um, is, a, is a huge advantage for cloud-based customers. Yeah, and you mentioned to be flexible, to be agile, and to, to do this, you need analytics. And in the report, uh, you mentioned that organizations with cloud solutions, and I think it's more than half believe that it positively impacted employee and customer data analysis, but also the collaboration with other business areas. Um, is this also the case, for example, if companies move to advanced analytics or even maybe to AI usage? You know, I, I think it is. Uh, and, and I think the survey probably speaks to that because, you know, AI and analytics in general are, um, they're very bursty in their consumption of, of technology resources, right? So there are extreme peaks and valleys. Um, when it comes to being able to process real-time speech or uh, sentiment um, or, you know, kind of run high volumes of data through our neural networks and our deep learning systems. Um, in order to support that, um, if you are in a cloud environment, you can actually kind of automatically, well, kind of automatically um, add new resources and servers on, on demand um, versus on-prem where you have to pre-order hardware and install servers and configure them and get the right operating systems on and put all the patches on. Um, and you might have to do that for just two hours of processing um, and then kind of back it all off when you don't need it anymore. In the cloud, it's it's immediate. Uh, and that's a big advantage. Yeah, and if we talk about AI machine learning, we talk about data-driven organizations and empowering employees is a key to a data-driven organization. So, um, access to performance metrics and flexibility of, of remote working, these are recognized in your report as the key drivers. Um, why are these two drivers supported by the cloud, you think? You know, it, that, that's, a, that's another good question. And, and again, you know, I, I think about flexibility and the ability to kind of repackage and relaunch software um, for, uh, for agent and agent engagement becomes really important. We're able to do things like um, create an environment where agents have more control over the hours and the shifts that they work. That kind of functionality and that new capability um, can be rolled out immediately um, to as many agents as you want. Um, and in a cloud environment, we spend a lot of time ensuring that the user experience 
is extremely intuitive. Um, and when you're rolling out software for, again, kind of talk about the pandemic, we do a lot of work with contact tracing, right? So when someone is diagnosed with COVID, there's a contact tracing process that goes that goes on where you contact each person who's been infected and you find out who they've been exposed to and then you contact them and so on and so on. Um, a lot of a lot of governments, a lot of states, a lot of organizations are deploying contact tracing in in huge in huge numbers in order to address the pandemic. Um, for instance, in the state of New York, I believe they put up four thousand new contact tracing agents literally over a weekend. Um, and, and when you think about what that means to agents um, in cloud solutions, they have to go with very little training, so it has to be really intuitive. And the training must be immediate and must be localized, right? So those kind of things are so much easier to roll out in the cloud um, that it, it empowers organizations to do things like that. And again, respond to respond to changes in the world around us. So Matt, you were talking about empowerment, and empowerment is the foundation for data-driven organizations. And if we look to the highest level of, of improving impact for the employee empowerment is performance transparency, but also the agent access to metrics. Can you elaborate in more detail about this, what's been explained in the report? That's a great question. You know, I, I think right now, um, data transparency, performance, um, data about performance and metrics are really uh, driving agent empowerment. And agent empowerment is so important right now. Um, we see it topping the charts um, in terms of, you know, things that, that companies are worried about. Um, and, you know, I, I think in, in the world that we live in today, um, the role of the agent is so much different than it was before. It used to be ask a question, give an answer, go on to the next interaction. Uh, but now I think companies rely on agents to do a, a lot more. They're brand ambassadors. Um, they're selling, they're cross-selling, um, and they are driving support. And in many cases, they are the only real customer engagement that people have, right? So when you think about the importance of loyalty and how customers form their opinions about companies, so much of that now hangs on the agent. Um, so making sure that the agent feels empowered to drive great service and to deliver great customer engagement um, is really critical um, strategically to organizations today. Um, and I think a lot of that engagement starts with understanding how they're performing. People intrinsically want to do a good job and they want to do better. Um, and being and being able to improve yourself really starts with getting feedback, right? So understanding how you're performing, giving you areas of opportunity to improve yourself, to hone your skills, and to get them tested continuously with customer interactions. So you get a continuous stream of feedback, helps people get better at what they do. And when people feel that they're getting better at what they're doing, they're making progress, they start getting into this state of flow, right? Where they feel like they've got the right skills to tackle challenging jobs, right? To make an unhappy customer satisfied and, and not just satisfied, but a promoter, right? Someone who's really loyal to you. That's a challenge. And every single interaction is a challenge just like that. But in order to do that, feedback, statistics, agent performance data is absolutely critical and at the center of that. Yeah, and I think we can get only more changes in the coming months if we go back to normal and the sooner the better, of course. Matt, thanks a lot. And I really recommend everybody involved in workforce uh, optimization to download the report. I really enjoyed reading it and it is great and valuable insights. Thank you, Matt, once again. And for the audience, thank you for watching and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.